looks good. Um, we have a couple minutes until your official start time. Do you want to go ahead and start, or do you want to wait a couple minutes? We can wing it. We can go with it. Okay, okay. great. <laughs> the people Sounds that are good. here can, can listen early. Whoever comes late, they come late. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Uh, sounds good. Yeah. Good to have uh, no uh, breaks. <laughs> well, between. thank you so much for but, having me today, David. Thank, thank you for being here. Yeah. So uh, you, you're welcome to go ahead and get started now. Well, today we're talking about options. That's the topic. Everyone's discussing their favorite option strategies. It's interesting, when I started trading back in 2008, I wasn't doing options. I had no intention of doing options. I was doing equity trading, day trading, which I still do. But I started doing options actually about seven, eight years ago now. And the reason I decided to do options is really to capture overnight moves in stocks because you can get big moves overnight. And when you're in an options trade, you have a fixed risk in an overnight move versus swing trading. If you take a swing trade and you're in it and the market goes against you or the stock goes against you overnight, you can lose an unlimited amount. In an option, if you have one contract or 10 contracts, the most that you can lose is the full position. Even if it goes way against you, you will only ever lose the amount that you have at risk. So that's like the insurance, you know, to have the protection to take an overnight position. So I really actually enjoy doing options. And I'm seeing here the chat. Let me just put this off to the side in case I get questions here. I'll, I'll answer them as we go along. Okay. So today we're going to talk about options. We're going to talk about volatility. And again, if you have questions, let me know. Put it in the chat. We're going to talk about how you can make money trading options in a volatile and bearish market. So it's been a very interesting year this year, 2022. And again, we're almost halfway through the year. It's hard to believe. I can't believe July 4th is next weekend, but it's true. We're getting to the point where it's almost going to be the holidays. And look where we've been this year. Look where the market's gone. Everyone said inflation was going to be temporary. And now people are talking about it being here for the next couple of years in a recession. So all of this has affected the overall market and many stocks as well. If you have questions, you can call me at 99 gap You can follow me at Twitter, at StockSwish, or Facebook, or YouTube. And you can also email me if you have questions today at melissathestockswish.com. I, like I said, I've been trading since 2008. I run a live daily trading room, but that room is not an options room. It is for day trades. I have an options newsletter that's separate where I do the options, and we are going to talk about last week's options trades today in today's lecture. But again, like I was saying, 2022 is halfway over. And I think this is a good time, especially around the holiday week, where you can take a break from trading, take a couple days off, take the week, long weekend, next weekend, and really evaluate where you are for the year. Are you on track to meet your financial trading goals for this year, or are you not? Okay. If you're not, then you need to change what you're doing. If you continue doing the same thing for the next six months that you've been doing for the first six months of the year, you're, you're not going to see any different results. And I think 2021, because it was such a bullish year in the market, people went long, every dip in the market, strong stocks and weak stocks, and it worked last year in 2021, actually. Even stuff that was weak rallied. And again, this was after the COVID rally from 2020 into 2021. The market was very bullish last year. That's not the case this year. So a lot of people are having a very difficult year. How do I know that? Because strangers email me, find me, people um, from YouTube and wherever they happen to find me and are telling me that they're down for the year. They're not doing well. So you got to stop what you're doing if you're not having a good first six months of the year so that you can change what you're doing to have a great last six months of the year, okay? You still have time to actually not only recoup your losses from this year, but actually move forward, move ahead into the next year, 2023, with a positive attitude and maybe doing something different. So sometimes, you know, when people start to trade, and I started trading in 2008, it wasn't like I started making money like that. I didn't know what I was doing. I took one class. I didn't figure out how to make money in that class, but I learned a very good foundation that helped me develop my own system that took me about three and a half years, which I do today and I've done ever since. And now I teach people how to do it. This is a process. Trading is a process. 
Making money is a process. Learning anything new is a process. And again, people always say, well, what's the learning curve if I come and learn what you do? I don't know what your learning curve is. I don't know how fast you'll pick it up. That's up to you. But as long as you're going up and you're making progress and you're moving forward and you're making money overall, over the week, over the month, over the year, that means you're getting somewhere, okay? It's not like where you're walking up a stairs and you just keep going straight up to the top. Trading is one of these things you may take six steps up and two steps back and then three steps up and one step back. But as long as you're continuing to move forward and go up, that's where you wanna be. But again, this year has created a downturn for many people's trading accounts, retirement accounts, and all kinds of things that you know it's put them in a negative position they're, they're just falling down the stairs. They're not going up the stairs at all and they're not making any progress. And that's why I'm telling people my advice today is take a step back from what you're doing because you don't want to dig yourself into a deeper hole into the end of this calendar year. So again, I have a business. I run a business. I teach people how to trade besides doing it myself. And really trading is a skill. It's a skill that you learn over time. I do technical analysis. We're gonna to talk today about a little bit of what I do in relationship to options, but it's a skill, okay? Like juggling, it's something that you learn and the more that you do it, you get better over time. That's the way trading is supposed to be. It turns out that's not the way it is for a lot of people. But when you think about it conceptually, you're like, okay, well, this makes sense. If I played a sport and I did it every day for hours and hours a day, for years and years and years, I would be a lot better now than I would have been when I started, whenever that was. But trading for people isn't always that way. They tend to do worse over time, or at the very least, don't get better. It's not supposed to be that way. Common sense says you do something for a long time, you're supposed to make more money. You're supposed to get better, okay? The problem is that people never do because they never really stick with one thing and develop the skill that is necessary to do it. It's something that I've done, and this is, again, tip of the day, stick with one thing and do it very well. That is all that you need. One trade a day, even one option a day, you know, is all that you need to do it. It's not about trading for six and a half hours a day every single second the market is open. So for me and for you, really, Think about the success that you want to have tomorrow. The preparation that you make today will help you into the rest of the calendar year 2022. So sometimes, like I said, there's steps that you need to take to prepare. You may not be at your goal yet, but if you take the right steps, the goal is going to happen. You're going to get to the destination that you want, which is, of course, profit, trading success, and having way more wins than losses. And again, many people are having more losses than wins this year, which is why I'm telling people to take a break and kind of step back. And the holiday week is a good time to do that. So today we're gonna to talk about trading options. There's really a lot of different types of traders out there. You have to think what kind of trading do you wanna do? Do you wanna do swing trading? Do you wanna do equity trading? Do you wanna do options? How much money do you have to trade? Uh, do you only have your retirement account? You can trade options in an IRA. You have to talk to your broker about this and setting it up, but it is something that you can do. It's important for you to know which category you fit into, what are your goals, and then to set the proper expectations for yourself. Before you even begin to risk any money in the market at all, you should have a strategy that you follow. What is the reason that you're taking the trade? Why are you taking the trade? In what direction and what time frame? Are you taking the trade in? Now, for me, with the options, I do the weekly. So I'm taking short time frames, really, uh, for options. I do not do leaps or long-term options. I like the fast trades. And by fast, I mean within a week. Now, this is a holiday week. I didn't do anything new today. But if I did, I probably would call it out till the following Friday next week. But of course, next week is a holiday week, too. So I probably wouldn't do a trade today that expires this Friday. But I'm normally doing the weeklies, okay? It is important, I think, to have a mentor where you don't need one. I do think it's helpful. And again, if you decide to come and learn from me, you can ask me questions. You can sign up for the options newsletter, ask me questions about the trades or trades that you're in. So let's talk a little bit more about the market here and volatility. Lots of times people think volatility is a negative thing. It actually is good. And it really is good for options tradings. Why? Because options are like a balloon. The air gets blown up in the balloon, woo, and it gets really big, and then it pops. And that's when the trade is over, which is when you want to get out. When the balloon's getting blown up, that's when you're up all the money. And the options chain is going, 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 going. 
And that's actually volatility, something that's happening. Volatility doesn't necessarily mean selling, which we've seen in the market since the beginning of this year. Volatility is something happening that's unexpected. You're sort of seeing that today with the rally we had in the market this morning. Now, I didn't look where we're at since before I jumped on here in the last hour to do the webinar today, but we were up this morning. And again, bullish moves can actually be volatile too. So volatility doesn't necessarily mean selling. It could mean buying, it could mean selling. It means something happens that's unexpected, okay? So as a trader, as an active trader, as someone, if you wanna do options, you can use that volatility to your advantage, okay? And we've seen that this year in many cases. Again, both bullish and bearish. So I clipped this from yesterday. This is a chart of the QQQs. Uh, this is an overall chart of the market going back the last couple of months. So you can see here how the market has rallied multiple times. Let's just go back to like a little bit more than a month ago. This was May. Today is June 21st. Market rallied up here in May, failed, dropped, rallied up again, looked like it was going to go somewhere, looked like it was going to take off like a rocket, rallied for three days straight, okay, and then fell off a cliff. This was last week, actually, okay the following week into the into the last week and then we had a three-day weekend with the holiday federal holiday yesterday today's tuesday market rallied friday before the holiday so what i look at when i'm making options decisions is i want to find the opportunity in the volatility to take the train and i'm doing that by looking for the gap so what is a gap a gap is the difference between the close and the open. Where can you see a gap? You can see a gap in a daily chart. This is a daily chart of the QQQs. So a gap is when this, the stock or the market, I'm saying the market here because I have the Qs up, closes at one price here at 4 o'clock and opens at another price here at 9.30. That is a gap. In this case here, this was the 10th to the 13th. It was Friday to Monday. This was a gap down. So there are gap downs. Then there are gap ups. Here was a gap up. This was the Fed decision day. They raised interest rates, 75 basis points. What happened here from Tuesday to Wednesday? The market gapped up, closed here at one price, opened at a higher price, rallied. That was last Wednesday. We had a green bar. So theoretically, you could have gone long here and you could have shorted here. We didn't go long there, but we did short here. Okay. So I'm looking for the gap. Then I'm making a determination if I want to go long or short. Could be in anything. Could be the market, could be stocks. Right now, it's at the tail end of earning season, full on busy season for earning season. Doesn't start until July, mid-July. But there are still opportunities to trade gaps most every single day. And again, I'm watching the market every day because the market is actually really great to trade because of the volatility that happens and then the big moves that happen in it, okay? So, and any questions, just plop it in the chat and I will see them. So getting back to what type of account do you need to trade options, okay? You can trade options with a cash account. You don't need a margin account. Now, if you wanna set up your options account as a margin account, fine. But you can actually set it up as a cash account. So you can open up a, an options account with as little as $2,000 while you know you have to watch your risk if you only have two thousand in the account you can't risk two thousand dollars in a trade the fact is that you can trade with a small account and that is something that people find very advantageous because if you want to open up a margin account at a retail broker you will need a minimum of twenty five thousand if you want to actively day trade so lots of people like to do options instead of doing equity trading because they can do it with less money okay they can do it with a cash account and then also, like I was saying earlier, you can capture the overnight moves. So going back to this here, what I was saying here, this is what I mean by an overnight move. Again, we're gonna talk about some of these trades in a minute here, but this is a big move overnight for the market. We fell, actually remember this was, I said Friday, it's like two weeks ago in the 10th. We closed down here around 289 and changed, 288, whatever it was, and we opened on a Monday like at under 280. So again, if you were in a put, which is a short, okay, we're talking about that in a minute, you would have made all of this money without doing anything at all. You were just in the trade and it went boop, and it went like that. So that is where you're looking to capture that 
overnight move, okay? Because the market's closed in the weekend. Market's closed at four o'clock. Um, someone is asking about a referral for a broker, David. I don't know if you wanna, you or Anka wanna give Henry a referral, if you want to. Anyways, you can trade options from home, which is nice. You can also trade options from your office. I have a guy that's trading options on the options newsletter who's trade who's actually working. He's a delivery driver. He trades on his phone in his truck. I don't know how he's doing that, but he is. He's doing it on his full-time job on his route. He places the trades when he gets the newsletters and then puts a sell order, I guess, or looks at his phone to see where the price is. It's pretty funny. So he's working full-time as a truck driver, active out and about, delivering packages and then trading options in between. So, you know, this is much, much different than active day trading where you gotta be in and out sometimes in five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. This isn't like honing it down to the minutia of seconds with options trading. Because again, we're doing it over a course of a number of days, not necessarily where I'm in and out of the trade in five minutes. So with all these advantages to do options, why is that that people find trading options so hard, okay? Is it because the market is volatile? Is that why they find it hard? Well, maybe, part of it, part of it, okay? But you know, you gotta get the direction right in your trade, no matter if you're doing an option, a swing trade, or a day trade anyways. So, I mean, if you're long and the market's falling, you're gonna lose. If you're short and the market's rallying, you're gonna lose. So you always gotta get the direction right, no matter what type of trade you take, option or otherwise. So really, it's neither here nor there. And the volatility that we're seeing here in the last six months of the year is not gonna go away anytime soon. And actually, it could last well into 2023 and actually into 2024. I'm saying that because the conditions, many of the conditions that are creating the high levels of inflation and recession actually have nothing to do with interest rates, have to do with decisions right now being made political decisions in the administration and things that are happening geopolitically across the world. So those things may not resolve themselves by raising interest rates. In fact, I think it's going to make it worse, which is what the Fed's doing, and I think it's going to uh, actually push us into a recession. But the fact is this volatility we're seeing could last until the next presidential election cycle, which is until the end of 2024. We could be in a situation of high inflation, high interest rates, high costs for things, or possibility of a recession, high oil prices well into the next two years, two and a half years. So look for the volatility to continue. And this is shocking to people. This is very shocking to people, okay? But you can capitalize on it, is what I'm saying. If you learn how to do it, instead of wasting the time doing things in the wrong direction and not understanding why this is happening, wishing it wasn't happening or doing the same thing that you did last year, which clearly is not working this year. But you know, there are many reasons why people find trading options hard. One is a lack of focus, a lack of clarity. Traders second guess themselves. This is common in any type of way that people trade. You really need conviction to trade well and make money. It's important in anything you do. And you have to have conviction to have great results. The conviction comes from the knowledge because without that, you won't be successful anyways, okay? So I focus on the knowledge, I focus on conviction, and this is again something that I teach people too. So what do I focus on? I focus on the gap. This was a nice chart. We did a bunch of trades in this. This was target. Again, I'm gonna show you here what is a gap. The stock closed here, this is back, May now. Closed up here, boom. Gap down here in the morning, boom. This was on earnings, okay? This was an earnings gap in Target. It happened late, happened the night in here, came down here in the morning on the 18th. Or maybe it was in the morning. Oh, maybe it was a night, I don't remember. I don't remember if this was post-market or pre-market earnings, but I know it was earnings. That was like a month ago. We did a put, it worked, fell, dropped. When you're doing a put, you're basically betting that the stock price is going to go down. So we buy puts and then we sell them and we buy calls and we sell them. But this case here was a put, okay? Now I didn't look at what this is doing or right before I got on, but this is probably backing up today with the market. This is a nice chart though, a nice chart with, with again, a nice gap. Here is the SPY, similar to the Qs, closed here, gap down, fell. Rallied the day of the Fed, closed here, gap down, fell. Then we had Friday, and now it's up today with the overall market. This is a SPY. So a gap is the difference between the close and the open. 
This was a bullish gap here. Tuesday we closed, open higher, rallied. You could have bought a call here and then you could have sold it and made money. You would have had to do that, otherwise you would have lost because we fell the next day, okay? So again, we're buying calls or buying puts. A call is a long. Down over here, back a month ago, what happened here? Market closed, gapped up, rallied. You could have bought a call in here in the market. You could have bought the 400 calls, got the lift, boom, got out, made money, okay? Now, I want to point out that not every bullish gap is a long and not every bearish gap is a short. Here's an example here. What happened this day? Market closed here, gapped up, fell. You bought a call here, it wouldn't have worked, it would have lost. Here's another example of one that flipped. Market closed here, gapped down. If you would have shorted it, it would have lost. It flipped, rallied, went up. So you can't always look at the gap, take the gap in the direction of the gap as an option, I developed a system and a strategy to, to, to look at criteria to determine if this gap that I'm seeing in the chart, whatever it is, a spy target, whatever, is going to go down or going to go up. Because again, with options, you have to get the direction right. I also think people are only concerned about timing and options. If something's going to work, it's going to work. What do I mean? The momentum's gonna come in pretty quickly, which is why I'm doing things for the week. I'm not gonna pay out for four weeks to do something a month away, because if the money isn't gonna come in, whether it's buying or selling pretty quick, I don't wanna be in it, I don't wanna pay out for it, I don't care, okay? Any questions here so far? So what I decided to do since we're talking about options today and we're talking about current market conditions was to go over the trades from last week that expired the week of June 17th, which was again the end of the last week. So the win ratio for the options newsletter was 100%. I called 10 trades, every single one worked. There were no losers. This is again me using my system, applying the system to make the picks. We're gonna go over all the trades here and the charts so you can see them. And the reason that I'm putting in here beginner trader risk is because I want people to understand they do not have to risk a lot of money in order to make money doing options, but they got to be accurate. And this is again where people just aren't, but they aren't in many things that they do, swing trades, equity trades, anything either. So average risk of all these trades is a thousand. Beginner trader, okay. If you did all the trades here, except for one you couldn't do, which, which I don't have in the totals, um, the beginner trader profits was 21850 Some of the trades you would have had to be in at the same time as others. We'll discuss that. And the average return on investment overall for the week of the 10 trades was 210% return on investment, which is great. Do we get that every week? No. No, we do have some trades that lose. On average, year to date, my win ratio for the options newsletter is 79%, which is amazing. Okay, so that means you figure 10 trades, two we're going to lose, eight are going to work. And just have that in your head when you size yourself at the risk. So let's talk about this was last week. So on Thursday the 9th, I called before the open, 912. If you want to sign up, you'd be on the list. You get the trade. You can't do it to the open. I called the Walmart 120 puts. They expired the following Friday. Again, I'm doing the weeklies. So what was this trade? How much did it cost? It was cheap. 75 cents for one contract. So if you set your risk, you want to do 1,000, fine, 2,000, fine, 5,000, fine, you set it. So you risk in this, if you took 15 contracts, would have been $1,125, sold it to 50, an exit of 614, I'm gonna show you the Walmart chart in a minute, profit $2,625 on this particular trade, the ROI was 233%. So this was the 120 puts, let's look. So I called that on the 9th. See it? It was early in the morning, the pre-market, when I send out a lot of trades. This probably doesn't even look like much to people. You're like, really? This was a nice trade because we got it at the right timing, at the right placement, and it continued, and it fell, and it dropped. Boom. So you take it, and you could have got out. And actually, it continued even further, not that you would have wanted to stay in it, but I just wanna show you here the very last day, not that anyone should hold it any last day, but the very last day you were still even up on this. I didn't look at the close price. 
it was still way under the strike, 118 and change on the very last day of the expiration on the 17th. So you could have got out actually any of these days in here last week. Over a 200% return investment, minimal risk. It cost 75 cents you could have taken, you know, 10, one, risk 750 bucks. It's a nice trade, okay? Again, you can open up an options account as a cash account. You don't have to have 25 grand in an account to do these trades. That was a nice, nice move, okay? And if you look at it, you might say, well, this doesn't look like much, but he, this was profit. This was profit, okay? Now, this was a really good call. That same day, a little bit after the open, I called at 9.46 a.m. I sent out, again, this goes to your email, the SPY 409 puts that expired on 617. This was a great trade. One contract costs $5.75. If you want to keep your risk at a thousand, every trade has to be close to that. Two would have cost you one thousand one hundred fifty. Sold at thirty six dollars. Now I get this question a lot: Is this the best exit you could have gotten? No. And I'm going to show you in a minute. This was an exit on six thirteen. It kept going. The best exit was actually Friday the seventeenth. Again, you know, I don't tend to hold trades that are up a lot into the last day. Like there would have to be a reason for me to do that. The profit on a risk of $1,150 was $6,050. A 526% return on investment in a trade that wasn't even the best exit in the trade. Here was the chart. How did this go so big? Because of what we were talking about at the beginning was volatility in the first place. So on the day I called it, here's the ninth. It fell closed, gap down fell. So remember, we did it up in here. We did the 409s. A put is a short. A put is a short. It's a short. You buy the put. Fell. Boom. Fell. You could have got out here. You could have got out here. You could have got out here, which is what I thought was a good exit. But I want to show you, it kept going. So I don't even know what this was. I didn't even go back and look at it. It was something stupid. Could have even been a thousand percent return investment. I don't know. It didn't quite get down to 360. So this was, you know, it was almost $50 through the strike on the last day. You know, it, it didn't quite get down. Here's the 17th. But there, you couldn't have lost in this. This is one of these trades that I call you can't have screwed this up. The only way you would have screwed this up is if you didn't do it. Even the day we rallied here, that trade was up. It, I mean, it was trading at 380. It was the 409 puts. It's $30 through the strike there. So, I mean, again, these are not always, I don't, I don't always get perfect exits. I don't, that's not like what I try to think about every time. I do the best I can, and then I try to make money, and that's what I do. So, I'm evaluating and looking at everything. The goal is to make money and to get the direction right, the pick right, and the timing of the entry right, you know, there's many times I get out of trades and they keep going. It's neither here nor there. That's very difficult to time. And when you're up this kind of money, you're, you're, you know, you have to take profits. You have to take profits, okay? But again, with a beginner risk, you could have taken $1,100 and change and made six grand in one trade. So when people say, well, I don't have enough money to do it. I don't have enough money. I have to do this much. This I have to risk a lot. No, you don't. No, you don't. People think they have to risk $2,000, $3,000, $5,000 to make any money in a trade. That's not true. The reason they think that is because they're basically scalping positions where they're only making 10, 25, 50 cents. They're not making a lot because they're not taking the trades correctly and getting the momentum. And again, getting back to momentum. This is momentum to the downside, people. This was momentum to the upside. This is momentum, the downside. The advantage to doing options is getting momentum and particularly overnight moves. In this case here, that is what happened and this is what makes it very advantageous to be in these positions. If it had gone against me, what would have happened? Again, if you took a $1,150 risk, what was the most you would have lost? That's it, that's it. If the market had gapped up to 450 and you would have lost, it, wouldn't, it would have never made it all the way down, probably you would this is what you would have lost that's it 
okay? Any questions here? Now, the next one we did was Thursday in the afternoon. I don't always do trades in the afternoon, but I saw it. We did the Target 155s. It expired the 17th to 218 in the afternoon. I emailed it out. Cost was $2.60. Four contracts. Again, you got to stick within the risk that you set. You set it. I'm not setting it. You set it. You can ask me what I think. So I'm using an average of 1,000. This is not an exact science. It's close to it. 1,040 sold at 13, profit 4,160, return investment again, a huge trade, 400%. You had the market with this, this fell. Again, could you have made more in this? Yes, I'll show you in a minute. Exit was 614. Joan is asking about uh, alerts. So the newsletter format is this, Joan. I forget if I sent you what one of the newsletters looks like or not. I don't have that in here, but the newsletter has targets on it, number targets, number targets. You do not have to use the number targets. Again, remember I was telling you the truck driver story. I don't know what he does. He might just buy Target and then put a sell order at Target as soon as he gets in it because he's delivering packages. He might put a sell order at five, okay? Something like that, that would almost be 100% out. You don't have to hold any trade to a target, and if you can't watch the chart, you can't do that. So I don't send alerts out when I get out for the very reason that different people decide to get out of different places. Some people get out of every trade the day that I do it if it goes that day before four. Why? They have a small account. They want to book the money. They don't care what percentage it's up. They just want to get out and have the money to use for another trade the next day because they don't want to be in too many things at once. You follow me? And it's an active letter. I mean, you're seeing this was 10 trades in one week. The other reason I don't is why. I don't want people coming back at me and saying, but you got out of it and we kept going again with another 30 points. Look, if I told people to get out of this and send an alert on the spy in the 13th, look where it went. I'm not going to deal with that nuttiness. You decide where you want to get out. This fell further. It went another 20 points. So I'm fully telling you that I do not get the best exit. I do the best I can. And that's all you can do. That's all that you can do. For me, it's it's even seeing on June 9th that we even could do something like this before it even happens. After the fact, everyone's like, oh, of course it went there. It's ba -doo -ba -doo. The fact that I can predict where it's going to go, which is based on my class, the big class of rating system, you know, that I can determine that and determine that so early in the morning, you know, in the pre-market, when did I send that out? Well, oh, 9.46, I sent it out. The fact that I can see that's going to occur before it does, which is the selling momentum, is a genius in my system. You know, I have, I have not perfected where I get out of tra every trade at the best exit. And so that's something that you will have to come to terms with yourself. And I think that you should do the best you can where you're setting targets and you can live with the fact that you made 100%. And if it keeps going, you just move off of it. You do the next trade. It's chunking it out. And that's whether you have a small account or a big account. Because let's just say you had 100 grand and you're not like somebody that has 2,000 and they're trying to get up to 10 or 25. Even if you have 100 grand, you can chunk it out to try to get 200 grand. Holding everything for the last second, it, you know, is not always the best idea. One, when you're in a trade, it can always go against you. Something could happen. Look at what happened with the war in Ukraine. No one expected that this year. Two, you, I'm, I'm calling other trades. The money you have invested in this trade, you can't use to take another trade or the profit until you exit it and pull it out. And when you close a position, then the next day you get up, the money's back in there with the profit. So you have to think of it like this is an active, you're actively trading. You're in, you're out, you're in, you're out. This is a different mentality than buying and holding forever. This is, you know what I'm saying? So like people have to kind of get their head on straight about what active participation is. Like we're this is an active newsletter. We're doing options, we're in, we're out, we're in, we're out, we're in, we're out. Okay, does this make sense? I understand everyone's like buy and hold it forever, but that's really long-term investment or even swing trading. And, and, and even people that are doing that right now, to be honest with you, are getting, are getting killed because they, they went long the market 
they haven't sold the market, they haven't exited it, and they're down, well, what if we drop another 20% or 10%? They're gonna just keep letting themselves be down and down and down. So you're better off taking profits, in my opinion. Uh, let's go back to the chart here. Where was I? What date was that? I think that was the ninth too. Here. Snap as a bug, I call this one here. Got the drop, boom. Boom, there it is. But I wanna point out where this one was the last day where you could have had a more of an exit too. So, you know. Uh, and again, we talk about the trades in the trading room. We talk about the market, but this is where it went. So this is another one where, <laughs> it's just a, a 155s. It was a 139 and change. I think it was a 138 actually Friday because we did a day trade in it. I think it went to 138 Friday. It's crazy. It was, you know, so it's, I didn't hold it till there. Uh, the days that I see trades, Bobby saying, do I send trades every day before the market open? No, I didn't send any today. I said that earlier. I don't know if you were here. There were no gaps rated per my criteria today. Therefore, we didn't do anything today. We actually didn't do any day trades today or options. Today was the day to just sit on your hands and wait this out and see where we go. Um, but I, so no, there are days if I don't get any gaps that rate per my criteria, we may not do anything. However, there may be days like on this particular day where I call several trades. So it all evens out, but there are some days when there isn't anything to do. Then on Friday at 8.50 in the morning, I called the 295 QQQs that expired the 17th, which was another one too. These were pricey, these were pricey, but you still could have done one at $1,000 risk for 700, sold at 20, $1,300 profit is still 186%. Is this the best exit? No, again, this went until the last day too. This fell on Friday more. But this was another nice entry, but it was a different day. So we did this on here, the 10th, okay? So again, sending out of the morning fell, boom. Gap down Monday morning, dropped. We do stocks, we do ETFs, we do both. We do things with volume. We do things that are good options to trade. There are some things that don't make any sense to do as options because they're too cheap or don't have enough volume or they just don't make any sense. So we have to do trades that are sent as as that have volume and they're all companies that you know companies you know the market etfs uh they are go out by email there's no text alerts if that's what you mean but everyone has phones and email connected to their phone nowadays so it hasn't been an issue like i was mentioning the guy that's on the road the diamonds 320 strikes we did on the 10th in the morning too sent this out again you can't do the trade to the open this was another put a put is a short it's a short. So I was predicting the market would fall, would drop. It did. Cost was 620. Two contracts. Risk was 1240. Sold at 16. Profit $1,960. Don't tell me you need a lot of money in an, in an account to trade. You don't. You can do it. The, you have to be good. But you got to be good if you have a lot of money. If you had a million dollars in your trading account and you don't know what you're doing, guess what? It ain't going to last. You're going to lose it. That one million is going to be 500,000. And that's just as painful as having a $2,000 account and losing the whole darn thing. You have to know what you're doing to trade. It's one of the reasons why I encourage people to sign up for my class and learn how to trade before they do it. Some people want to. Some people don't. Some people just want to sign up for the options newsletter and get the trades. That's fine. There's no prerequisites. You don't have to learn my system to be on the newsletter. You don't. I think it helps, though, if you learn it. And eventually what ends up happening is most people then end up doing the class anyways. They're signing up for the newsletter, see the system works, realize it, make money, and then they do the class after the fact. But if you just want to sign up for the newsletter, you can. Return on investment in this was 158%. This was the diamonds. For some reason, this was this would have gone a lot bigger. For some reason, BA just wouldn't fall, wouldn't fall, wouldn't fall, finally fell. That's a big portion of the Dow index. And again, we do this sometimes. We don't do this all the time. But this was the 320s that I called here on the Friday. Fell, fell like everything else. Okay. I think the SPY was the bigger move in this. And it's been weaker than a lot of things overall. And BA kind of held this up from buying. Sometimes I do uh, them at the money. Sometimes I do them away from the money. It's whatever I see that I want to do and the cost of it that I think makes sense. When we did the Netflix ones on Friday, early in the morning, I sent the trade out. The 180 puts expired on the 17th. It was Netflix. This was another good one too. 520 cost, two contracts. Risk was 1,040. 
Again, beginner risk, set it the same. 2,000, 2,000, 1,000, 1,000, get it close enough. You can't say I'm gonna risk $1,000 a trade and then do something that costs 5,000 like a Google. You can't do that. Then you gotta take five trades to come back break even if that one loses. If it means you can't do that one, then you can't do that one, okay? Sold at 1575 profit, 2,110. Return on investment, 203%. And again, this was on the 10th. So here was this guy here. Doesn't look like much, does it? But it fell, boom, dropped. This is Netflix. Um, my Actually, my win ratio is pretty consistent. I've been doing this now for 10 years. Well, the options, I'm sorry, the options we've been doing for, like I said, for seven. But my system itself for equity trades or day trades is all the same system. It's the way that I decide to take the trade, if that makes sense. But as far as this year in particular, Bobby's asking how, you know, we're doing really good this year. There's been a lot of weeks this year that we've had trades like this. Go back to this one here. So, well, that one, 400% and this one. So the difference between my win ratio has been consistently around 80% ever since I figured out my 26 points in the system and taught the class, whether it's day trading or options, however you do it. The difference for 2022 is that we are getting massive movers, massive momentum and massive winners. So again, a winner is a winner if it's up 50% to me. That's a good place to start watching to see if you want to look out. This year, we're getting such big moves and so much volatility and so much momentum that the percentage of return and investment this year in a lot of the trades has been jimongous. That is not the case every year. Does that make sense? Now, again, people say, well, you're shorting here the market. That's true. Am I ever going to go long the market again? Of course, yes. You know, I've done calls in the market. In fact, I think we did some even at the end of last year, or the beginning of this year. I don't even remember the last time we did. We, we, I, do, I do calls too. I'm showing you this one week, okay? But yes, I do go long. I prefer to short, all right? Will I do calls in the market again? Yes. Yes, I will. I'm not in any right now, though, despite the fact the market's rallying today, okay? So it's more about the massive movements that we're seeing this year that has made such a difference of these huge return and investments for people, which, you know, helps everyone. It helps the people that have small accounts to turn them into bigger accounts, and it helps the people that have big accounts to turn them into even bigger accounts. So that's, that's really where the benefit of 2022 volatility has been. And like I said, it's going to continue the rest of this year, and I think there's a large possibility it could continue into, until the next election cycle. Um, where were we here? Netflix, 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 Amazon. You're new to options. You find it difficult to understand options terminologies. I don't think I talk about a lot of strange words or difficult words in terminologies. Um, you're just, if you want to do this, you take the trade. You, there it is. You buy the 109 Amazon puts. There's not, there's no, what's the terminology there? There's not a lot to, to know about it. What do you mean show them how to set it up? What do you mean set it up? If I send a trade at 11, 11, boom, take it, get it, buy it, get in. I don't know what you mean by that. If you have a certain broker and you don't know how to actually execute the orders, if that's what you're talking about, whoever asked that question, you do have to learn that from your broker. I'm not a broker, they will walk you through how to do it. But I'm. this is right, very self-explanatory here, I think. Then we did the Amazon 109 puts that cost 270. Four contracts, risk was 1,080, sold at 750, profit was 1,920, 178% investment. This was after the split in Amazon. Remember, the price is different now and the cost of these is different now. They used to be very, very, very expensive. Here's the Amazon chart. So this, it's nice that people can do these now because they're so, so well priced. Um, so this closed here, this gap down fell. So this was the 10th, then it fell in here, then it got the drop. So you can see in here how we did it and how I called it. And again, it varies what price and strike I decide to do it. 
if you think it's too pricey for you to do one of the strikes, you could do one of them below the strikes. It's going to work if it goes in your favor. If you want to pay less for it, that's fine. Okay. Uh, then we did the 380s on Monday. I did the 380s, 846 in the morning. I mean, these work too. 775, one contract, $775, sold at 17, 925 was a profit. This was an exit on Thursday. And here's what happened to this trade. So I called the trade in the morning, then it fell. This moved a little bit in here. You could have got out theoretically here or here with profit. I didn't, I didn't think it moved enough. Then it was down. Then it was down. Then it was down on Wednesday. Okay, expires Friday. That's why this could have not worked. I believe that it would. In fact, I said in the morning on the room of the FOMC day, even if we rally, even if we rally, even if we have a positive reaction to the Fed announcement, even if they raise it more than expected, which is exactly what they did, even if we rally, it's not going to last long. I said, I don't know when we're going to lose the rally. Could be a day, could be an hour, could be whenever. It's going to lose it soon. It, it lasted nothing. It lasted barely the morning, the overnight. It lost it the next day, the second that the market opened. So then it was up. Boom. And this was actually up more the last day. You could have stated this one the last day. So I called the 380s. Again, it came down in here to 360 something. Then I called the 280Qs on that same Monday, early in the morning, 9.03. Cost was $6, two cost 1,200. I don't have a problem if you wanna take 1,200 versus 1,000. If you wanna get two in, that's okay. The idea is taking 10 and risking six if you're supposed to be risking 1,000. That's when people can't go off the rails. Sold at 10, profit 800, again, nice trade. You said, well, this isn't 100%. No, some trades aren't 100%. It's up. It's the day before the expiration. You don't know what it's going to do Friday. It's up. It's up more than half. Get out. So again, here was this one here. So here I called it. It was up, up, down. Boom, fell. You get out. You get out into the momentum in it. You don't know what's, you don't wait till the last day if it's up because you don't know what can happen here. Now, as this turns out, this was up and down and up and down and wiggled and jiggled on the last day. But, you know, the day before is probably when I'd be looking to get out of something like this, especially if I was down the day before, okay? Because it went over the strike here. This was the one, if you had a, a small risk, the 650 Teslas called this on Monday, 942, you couldn't have done it. You would have said, X can't do it. It cost $22 for one, you could have made money selling it or did whatever, but it, it, the bottom line is that you wouldn't have done it. With a small account, with a tiny account, you can't take double your risk. So I'm just showing you who this trade here worked too, but you would, I, would, you would not have done it because of the fact it was outside your parameters. So that's the whole bugaboo about sticking to your goals and deciding what you wanna do. Again, here's where I called it, pushed back with the market drop, fell, here's the day you would have exited if you wanted to. No, that's my whole point. I watch for the targets, Bobby. I don't always get out of every trade at 50%, no. Why, if it still looks good and it's going, I have plenty of time left, I'll stay in it. I'm looking for targets, I'm looking for the chart, but if you're busy, if you're working, if you're running around delivering packages and you can't watch what's going on here on any given day, then you do have to decide, I'm going to just put a sell order, it's a limit order, day order, it'll fail you and get out of it before four. If it doesn't hit you and get out before four, whether you put it at 50% or 10, I mean 100%, either way, it'll cancel out and you'll be in the trade overnight until the next day. So, so again, 10 trades, all winners, you didn't do the Tesla, trader profits for the ones in here that you did do, this did not include the Tesla, it was 21,850 and with an average risk of 1,000. Some are a little bit less, some are a little bit more, it all evens out. It was a very profitable week. Again, answering the questions before. I've been at an 80% win ratio for years since I've created the system, but the difference with this year is, you know, 21,000 some dollars, almost 22 grand in one week, is a, with this type of risk, is a result of the volatility we're seeing and the massive momentum we're seeing in the direction we're doing the trades. In the case of this week, it was puts. So I will do calls too. But when you have the market with you, everything works. And the reality is I'm very good at reading the market. So the big moves are happening this year, which helps people make money. And that's what you want anyways. So that's the whole point of doing this. So again, someone was asking about exits and this, that, and the other thing. This is income producing. 
it's not, you know, again, long-term investing. You want the momentum. You want the fast move. You want the move, okay? You're better off getting out so you can get in and do another trade. Then, you, then that trade is up money. Then you get out of that one. Then the next day you take another trade. Then that one moves. Then you get out of it. Then you take another trade. It's book it, book it, book it. It's chunking it out. It's not long-term investing. If that's your mindset, you're going to have to make some shifts in your head. And you'll see that as we go along and as we do this. Okay, this is not buying and holding till the end of time. You can't. You can't. Every option has a time associated with it. It's going to expire in a set date. And I just got done telling you, you shouldn't hold everything to the last day if you're up. I might hold it the last day if I'm down to see if it turns around and goes in my favor, but I'm probably not holding the last day if I'm up unless it's so far through it. And even then I probably will be out because I'm up so much money. How relevant are fundamentals to taking entries? Not for me at all. Is it possible to succeed trading options based on technical charts only? Yes, and that's exactly what I do. Uh, so does every trade work? No, no, it's about, it's about high odds. You put the odds in your favor, you put the risk on that you can afford and you take the trade and you get up in the trade and you get out. Okay, you have to put the odds in your favor. And again, one of the reasons I think people are not successful trading options is they're not good at reading momentum and they're very overly concerned about time value and things like that. And while that is something that you have to be aware of, that's I'm not making decisions based on those things. I'm looking at the gap, I'm looking at the momentum, okay? If you decide you wanna trade, and just do options as an income stream, that's fine. You can trade options from home, like I said, just like day trading. But overall, today is one of these things in this world, people just want extra money for stuff. You can do this on the side part time. You can trade with small account. You can trade in a non-margin account. You can get big overnight moves in stocks in the market, which is beneficial. And you can also trade expensive stocks like Tesla, which is $650 or whatever a share. For 22 bucks for one or $2,200 for one, you need a lot more money to take a position in that as an equity trade, whether you did it as a swing trade or a day trade. So you can trade expensive stocks like Tesla at reasonable prices, and that makes it advantageous too. So you can trade options with less money, and that's why people like to do it, plus capturing the overnight moves. But again, getting back to what I was said at the beginning of the lecture today, you have to change what you're doing if you're not making money. I think what happens is people dig themselves a hole, taking classes and also doing trades, and they're not where they wanna be with this thing, and that it makes it very difficult for them to keep pressing forward to be successful doing something else. But you've got to do something else if you wanna be successful if what you're doing isn't working. I mean, that's common sense, basic sense. You know, it's never that you just roll out of bed and all of a sudden you're successful trading. It takes time. Remember the stairs. Uh, taxes would be good. You don't have to watch email every day. You set a ding, you put an alert for my alerts to come out and do it. But it's really not a big deal, Robert, because I don't send trades all day long. So I'd say 80%, 85% of the trades are set in the pre-market. So you check your email in the morning before the open at 9.30, and if you miss one that I send out at 2.30 or one that I send out at 11 a.m. once in a while in a blue moon, then you don't do those trades. I'm not sending trades all day, every day. By no means am I doing that. Most of the trades are sent in the pre-market. So you check your email before the open, you take the trades in the morning, and that's it. Um, I don't know what your question is there, Bobby, what you're asking me. Let me get through this here, I'm looking at the time. So if you wanna learn my system, I measure gaps by rating them in the daily chart to find stocks to trade that have a high probability of directional bias for the entire day. Big move in the day, early confirmation of the bias in the move early, and precise entries with follow through and a good risk to reward. The function of how much you risk is based on the size of your cash account. And again, you can use my system for options or day trades. I like to do both, it's up to you. Today we were discussing options and I think this was a good lecture day to show a whole week of trades. So my system is called the Golden Gap System. It's a 26 point professional bearish gap rating system. The purpose of the system is to help you evaluate which gap to trade each morning using a checklist. I'm looking for the short side first, always. This checklist tells you what to trade, when and in what direction. The 26 point checklist predicts directional bias in a stock. When I'm looking for the downside first, I'm always looking for that because I find that a lot of people do not know how to short. It gives me an edge to know how to do that 
and you can get fast moves and big moves to the downside. Again, that's one of the reasons we've had such huge return in investments in options trades this year and day trades too. But the key is to know what you're doing. What I'm doing in the philosophy is I'm reading institutional money and price patterns in the gap. We talked about that in the charts. And that's it. You could do it as an option, you could do it as a day trade, whatever works for you, okay? And you chunk it out. It's great to say, I wanna make 100 grand a year doing this, I wanna make 200 grand a year doing this, I'm gonna do this. It's some, that can be overwhelming. Number one, some trades aren't gonna work. And if you go off the rails, if you take a trade and you lose and you go off the rails, you're never gonna meet your goals. So you gotta stay focused, you gotta chunk it out, you gotta take profits when you're up in trades. 100% is good. And some of these are just huge. I mean, to hold on the last day, it just doesn't make sense, people, okay? Some trades, you will have fabulous exits. You'll be like, oh my God, I had a perfect exit in that. Sometimes I say that too, but it's not all the time. It's not every week. It's not every trade by far, okay? No, I did say that earlier. I did say that earlier that we do calls too. It depends on the market conditions. This week that I showed you here, we did puts. It depends on market conditions what I'm looking at. Why? Because overall, I sometimes am looking for the help of the market. Okay? If we time here at the end, I don't think I will, but I can look at the market. But um, how many trades per day? Again, it depends. I'd look at a week. Probably on an average week, it could be 5 to 20. So a slow week would be 5. A busy week could be 20 trades. So far this week? I haven't called anything today. Yesterday, the market was closed. So I'm reading the market. Are we going to rally? Are we going to fall? And that's helping me make some of these decisions here with things that I'm doing. But earnings season, like I said, is in a couple of weeks in July. Then I will be looking at specific earnings. And I don't need the market for that. We're just not in earnings season right now. But there's opportunities, so we're still trading. So again, I'm focused on gaps. I'm focused on one strategy. If you want to learn my system, I teach it in a class called the Golden Gap Course. I'm doing a summer sale for the class that's this weekend. So if you want to do the class, you have an opportunity to do it Saturday and Sunday this weekend. It's a two-day course. Normally, I charge $69.99 for the class. It's January 25th of uh, January. I just realized I put January there. <laughs> oh, my God. My mind is in 2023. Isn't that funny? My assistant didn't even notice it. <laughs> It's June 25th and 26th, not January. How funny. You can see where my head is into 2023. Uh, the class is $69.99. The class is online. And the I put January 2, <laughs> 24th 11. If you sign up by Friday, you'll save $1,000. The class is only $59.99 this week. And you get one month free in the live trading room. I am laughing that neither me nor my assistant saw that. How funny. Um, if you want to sign up for the options newsletter, it's $69.99 for 12 months and six months is $49.99. Uh, these are the subscriptions. I don't have anything less than that. So you get six months if you sign up now, I'll take you to the end of the year. 12 months will take you into 2023. No prerequisites, no trials for this. If you don't want to learn, you just sign up, you get the trades. June is too hot. Switch back to January. It's just so funny that me and my assistant both looked at this and and we neither one of us noticed it. Uh, this is a testimonial from someone. I'm looking at the time. Any last minute questions here? Let me just say something about a basket. Uh, I, I look at, I have a scanner and I look on my scanner and then I rate the gap. So I'll, I'll have things that I look at every day, like the market. But other than that, I don't really have like a basket. Listen, thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me.